Directed by Amit Gulani and Sameer Saxena, Kalabani starring Mona Singh, Arushi Sharma and Ashutosh Gwarikar in the lead roles is finally released on Netflix. As the compelling drama releases on the streaming platform, we thought this would be the perfect time to discuss what to expect from season 2 of the series so that you can have the best viewing experience. A spoiler warning is in order as we will be discussing essential plot points and character details from the show. So if you haven't been able to catch up with the series yet, maybe you should pause the video and get back to watching it on Netflix. But if you are done watching it already, kindly follow us through this video. And yeah, while you're at it, please like the video and subscribe to our channel. It helps us a lot. Thank you and let's move on. The series ends with Keetan learning that Project Atavus was just to create a helipad for Brandon to land, which surprises Keetan as such a minor thing has claimed so many lives. Wani offers him to bring Lithu to Huxley Island to continue further testing and in return, he will receive his get out of the island pass. While bringing Lithu, he decides to let her go as he was somehow fallen in love with her. So when he returns empty-handed, he receives a fatal beating from Wani's bodyguard Rajvi. At the testing center, Santosh reunites with his daughter Kaddu but later finds out that she is infected as well. At first, he thanked Jutsna for saving her but when she told him that she couldn't risk letting her go to prevent further outbreak, he killed her to silence her. In the meantime, Vinu reaches there but he is unaware of his lover's present condition. As Jutsna dies, Ritu and Basu are alone to go look for the plan but they are unsure of the path and the future at large. Kadri regretfully decides to go with the testing on Urakas because he sees this as a quest for the survival of the fittest. But he is unaware that the Urakas Chiru secretly takes Enmei to his home to repent for his sins but soon they are attacked by Kadri's men. But in the end, the Urakas surround the army men and they are ready to get their hands dirty this time. In the meantime, Santosh and Kadu board the Huxley bound ship and it seems that their future is unsure as well. Although the show hasn't received a second season renewal as of yet, there is still hope for the second season that the majority of us are now anticipating because of the way the first season's seven-part narrative ended. More than ever, the series is praised for its realistic style which has not shield away from bringing back the horrifying memories of the lockdown while also crafting a unique plot unlike any other Indian show currently available on OTT platforms. This has only strengthened the show's appeal to both viewers and critics. With such warm response from everyone, there is a good chance that these characters will return. Additionally, the series' director Sami Saxena serves as the CCO of TVF, a media outlet well known for billing a series as multiple seasons. The Saula family had only gone outside to take in the picturesque surroundings of the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. They had no way of knowing the terrible fate that awaited them there. Santosh has been working hard to get back together with his family but the LHF 27 nearly kills them all. Nothing, not even the epidemic itself, was going to stop him from making it safely to the evacuation ships that would take him and his daughter to Huxley Island, the promised safe haven for survivors, now that he only had Kaddu left as his pillar of emotional strength. Even when Kaddu begins exhibiting LHF 27 symptoms, he still takes her with him despite the fact that it would mean killing Chutsna. Despite being safe and sound on the ship, he has once more put thousands of lives in danger that the LHA bacteria would have otherwise spared. How Kaddu's illness will affect others in the long run and whether she will be cured or Santosh will have to say goodbye to the last survivor of his family are two things we would like to see explored in the upcoming season as this may be one of the most inevitable events of the show. Vinu and Jotsna's story was never given a happy ending and before Ketan 2 fell for Ritu Gagra, he made sure that we all felt like hating his character. After making the decision to free Ritu, he was tortured by Mr. Wani and his lackey. But even then we have to admit that he and Ritu were an excellent team. We are eager to see if their paths will cross again now that she has left for a new island in search of the remedy plan, assuming Kanchan allows Ketan to live after all that beating. The likelihood of Ritu discovering the plan she needs to create the cure even if only in traces is slim because she is travelling to another isolated island with Basu uncle. The fact that the desperately needed plan is already at Jotsna and Venus old school which also served as the meeting place for survivors before being transported to the ships for evacuation really irritates me right now as nobody has yet found it growing in their own backyard. Will the following season burst this bubble or will the attempt to obtain the required peptide from the Uraka system lead to the outbreak of a civil war on the land of the Andaman and Nicobar Islands? The Urakas have already declared war especially after Enmei shot an arrow at the police. But will Chiru assimilate into this community now that he is aware of his true birth identity? 
We have yet to see Chiru's reaction to this new development and apparent evolution in the Urakan character despite the fact that he has strongly sided with the Urakas. Although Swasti survived those near fetal dangers, it can be assumed that she took Dr. Ritu's word for it and gave her permission to abort her child for the procedure to be successful. Vinu is the only person at the school who is aware of the Echinacea plant, despite the fact that he is unaware of some of the greatest familial tragedies. Ritu seems to be the only one looking for the remedial plant at the moment, so she will be the only one interested in this news, but given that they will meet someday somehow, her best chance of getting her hands on it is if she makes contact with Vinu. Only season 2 will be able to provide us with the answers to these and other questions such as whether or not Vinu will be able to gather himself after learning of Jotsna's passing and contribute to unraveling the mystery of this fabled plan. The series is one of the most original Netflix India content so far. The premise and the plot revolve around mostly real life problems that we are facing right now. The environmental issues do not take a secondary position in the plot like most of the shows dealing with similar content. It paints us human in our true color and probably wants to portray that we are not the perfect beings that God has created. If anything, we are far from it. The PR might seem a bit anticlimactic, but that is life. We are essentially violent and evil and there is no redeeming for our sins. The performances of Sukant Goel, Amir Vag and Arushi Sharma are extremely good and nuanced. However, it is Vikas Kumar who steals the show. I believe his character Santosh and Amir's character Ketan are two of the best written characters of the show. Though Amir's arc is quite similar to Sukant's, as by the end of the series they find a singular decent purpose in a long time, Vikas's character arc is entirely different as he gradually evolves from prey to predator in a short while and he is ready to go to any lengths to protect his family. His arc mirrors the other two but takes his character on an entirely different journey. The screenplay keeps us hooked throughout its runtime and its sense of confinement oozes the sensibility of the unseen early stages of Cordyceps' outbreak in the HBO series The Last of Us. The way the makers handle its ensemble characters is commendable, however the dialogue in certain scenes felt a bit unoriginal and partially cringe, especially the conversations between Vinu and Jyotsna. The cinematography of Dhananjay Navagra is awe-inspiring as he masterfully captures the geography of the mostly unseen land of the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. The music on the other hand did not strike a chord with me, but the back and forth between the characters, especially in the end, is extremely relatable and insightful. The makers devised some clever plans to narrate their stories through scientific allegory and it works really well to depict a character's journey through all 7 episodes. We are not sure whether the series is going to be renewed for a second season or not, but if it does, I will be waiting for it eagerly. This series is a breath of fresh air in the Indian OTT contents library that mostly deals with either gangster or mid thriller bullshit and gives us a sense of hope that if pursued correctly, we are capable of making emotionally riveting sci-fi stories that can connect with the audience to the core. Hey hey hey, thank you for watching this video, do share your thoughts in the comment section about your experience of watching Kalabani on Netflix, hit the like button and subscribe to our channel to get your weekly dose of cinema and series. See you at the next one and for the timing we are signing off, Acha chalta hoon, the fittest always survive and I'll be back.